You mentioned today that you, you really want to partner with nonprofits and congregations and churches. I mean, kind of how do you foresee that looking like? Yeah, you know, uh, Governor Keating had rolled out a marriage initiative and uh, kind of engaged the faith-based communities to uh, do counseling and that kind of stuff around the state. And I want to go to every single county and bring the nonprofits, the church leaders together. Uh, because, you know, I, there's denominational differences that divide us, but we can come together about solving our foster care numbers. We can come together with our teenage pregnancies, our drug use, high school dropouts. Those are the uh, social issues that I want to try to engage county by county, because when you break your goals down in smaller uh, 77 smaller goals, mm -hmm. it's much easier to tackle them than looking at the whole thing together. So that's how we're going to have to accomplish that. The support that you'll need from people within those counties I heard you s alluding to today. Talk to us a little bit about that support that you'll be asking people for all across the state. Yeah, well today this uh, prayer service was uh, broadcast all across the state. A lot of churches carried it live around the state and so I was so excited. I just wanted to plant that seed that we need them stepping up and solving their problems neighbor by neighbor and county by county because when you walk beside someone that's when real transformational change can happen and and uh, so that's what I'm excited to lead kind of set the tone and and really say hey here's the numbers here's the foster care numbers here's the high school dropouts or the teenage pregnancies or drug use we need to start coming together as a community to solve that you mentioned a few times about kind of remarking in your journal. Do you, do you keep a daily journal? Or? Yeah, I try, to, I try to keep a daily journal. It usually turns into every couple days, but uh, I certainly try to document what I'm thinking and my thoughts. And it's so fun. I mean, going back a year ago, and I sometimes will go back a year to that day or within that week and, and remind myself what I was doing, what I was thinking. And especially on the campaign trail, I really wanted to document uh, my thoughts and because um, I, I just had a, a sense of history as we were kind of making it through the last two years. Earlier this year, uh, you were you know asked about uh, your your pro life stance. You cited your your faith. I'm, I'm curious, would you like to see a, a, a more restriction to abortion bill land on your desk this year? You know, uh, here's the deal. I've been telling people I am I'm obviously pro life and and want to make sure that I protect life. I believe it begins at conception, uh, but that's a it's a lot of federal issue. It's the U.S. Supreme Court, and I'm focused on growing Oklahoma. I'm focused on uh, turning around our. Uh, education system and our health care and as a business guy I just think about getting our economy growing uh, but I'll sign every piece of uh, pro-life legislation that hits my desk and uh, uh, but again there's a lot of stuff that has to work through nationally uh, to change that issue. What did it mean to you today to have all these um, people here supporting you, um, surrounding you in prayer, um, the pastors at the end literally just having hands on you and your family uh, to pray over you all. What did that mean to you? It was uh, it was an awesome service. I hope you guys enjoyed it too. Uh, but I just the message of pace, the pace has changed in Oklahoma. The message of there's the bridge. This shouldn't be a Republican or Democrat or uh, whatever the issues. We can come together as Oklahomans, like I said in my inaugural speech, hand in hand, arm in arm, and move our state forward. And that's the message that I have. That's who I am. I'm so inclusive with everybody. And uh, just want to make sure that people know uh, you know, it should not be a partisan issue. Let's just go dig in and let's fix these issues. Uh, Madam First Lady, I mean, you've talked about mental health being an important issue for yes. you. It, obviously, foster uh, families was a focus during the inauguration. What kind of role do you see nonprofits and churches serving in that capacity for you? Well, I'm excited about a lot of the nonprofit profits that are getting excited about someone in our position that are ready to really champion that cause. I consider my life kind of an American dream story and really a miracle. And I want the future generations of Oklahomans me having six children that just impacts my life i want them to understand that anything is possible and i think we need to get the nonprofits and the churches and the people that have a heart for these social messages and give them the resources to help execute and help get uh, make a difference in a lot of these issues you talked to me um, several times about how important this morning ceremony was to you yes. and i know that you worked really hard to make sure that it was exactly what you wanted um, how did it feel today watching it all unfold? I mean, that choir was something spectacular. Mm -hmm. And then just to hear just the energy among the pastors, mm -hmm. three very high energy pastors from the Tulsa area. How did that make you feel to see your baby basically 
come to fruition today? Well, it was everything I prayed for and hoped it would be. And of course, in these things and these events, you don't know how it's going to go, but it came together beautifully. I think it um, really broadcast the message that Kevin and I have on our hearts for Oklahoma, and I hope it inspires people. That's what I wanted for this service. I wanted this service to inspire Oklahomans to come together and try to make a difference. You talked about um, being from Tulsa, and I think that's something that a lot of people don't di maybe didn't know or didn't find out along the way. But but they're learning that about you, and and they saw you at the Lord Duster opening and several things, and they're and they're starting to see how you're going to be making such a difference in our state as well. Yes, well, I mean, it, we all, Kevin and I both came from humble beginnings, and we, we are, we're not going to forget that. And we want to be able to use that uh, past history in our lives um, to moving forward, and that's what I plan to do. I plan to never forget where we came from and to use those life lessons. I believe everything that happens in your life can be used as a lesson for the future, and that's what Kevin and I both plan to do. How did it feel this morning for you? Um, you woke up and you were governor of the state of Oklahoma uh, for the first time. How, how did that feel? It, it, was, uh, it was an amazing feeling. We spent the night as a family for the first night at the governor's mansion. Uh, so walking downstairs to the governor's mansion, I walked down and the staff was down there cooking breakfast and I had my long johns on and I said, am I allowed to walk down here at the long johns? And they said, <laughs> we've seen every governor in their underwear, sir, you're fine. <laughs> and it was, uh, it was just a cool feeling walking down the steps as uh, uh, there as the governor. And we're just so excited as a family. And thank you, Oklahoma, for giving, uh, putting your trust in us. Are your kids excited uh, spending the first night in the mansion? I mean, it had to feel surreal to them as well. Oh, it, it did. We, we all talked about it. I just told them to, hey, remember this moment because when you're 50 years old, you'll be able to think it back and remember this moment. So we're just trying to enjoy the, enjoy the moment in the first few days here.